Now, I need y'all to do me a favor, because this is not my first time to Florence. I've been to Florence several times. I had a good time, but the gatekeeper was kind to bring me. Uh, everybody can be a gatekeeper. The gatekeeper, God gives an extra uh, set of power to to make sure certain spirits don't come and intrude upon the land. And I believe this man's walk with God is keeping certain demonic spirits and y'all not clapping and issues outside of Florence and maybe even the state of South Carolina. He told me to be myself. That was the most dangerous thing he could have ever told me. But I want y'all to do me a favor because I hear God speaking and I want you to do it with passion and with power. I want you to clap your hands when I tell you and hold on, I gotta thank God for one more man who I've known almost as long as I've known Philip Coleman just a few years later, Bishop William Young, walking down that aisle. I, I just, oh come on, saints of God. It's just good to know good people. I'm going to ask you when I tell you to clap your hands and look left and right. And what you're going to be clapping for is for the success of your neighbor. Don't do it yet. I think everyone in here is only as blessed as who you are sitting next to. And I've been watching some of you and y'all sit there lethargic near somebody and then want a miracle. But you got to ask God to bless who's sitting next to you. So clap your hands and scream for the success of your neighbor. I like what I feel over there. I tell people, Bishop, please be seated. The next time you stand, it's because you choose to. But I tell people often, praise is what earth gives to God. And prophecy is what God gives back. I believe death and life is in the power of your tongue. And on the tip of your tongue is either your funeral or your future. Now, front row, I need y'all to talk to me because... We have a lot to do and a little time to do it and a flight to catch because it's my birthday weekend. Who's? I know we're online, so I'll be prophesying if needed, online and offline. But who's Whittington? This name Whittington keeps coming to me. I don't know who it is, but the name Whittington is coming to me very loud. I want to look at the camera. I want the camera to get a... a if it's you, then wave and come to me, because I'm, I'm sure not looking for nobody. My glasses are right here. I ain't coming to nobody. All right, you can stand there. You can stand there. Hello. You can stand right there. What's your name? Beverly. How are you? How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for being kind. This was the will of the Lord. Hold on. There's another, there's another Whittington, too. Name starts with a K. There's another name. What's your whole name? Beverly Ann Whittington. You know, my birthday's this month. When's yours? Um, do you have a nickname? Who? Oh, okay, good. I want to say something to you because we don't know each other yet. Then I got to go to someone urgent. God says that the address in which you're living is about to change. The Lord said you tried two times, but this time it will go through. The Lord said you are moving before the fall and somebody with a loud mouth 
Because when praises go up, prophecy is the result. Be seated. Bishop, I'm a minister to five people, then I'm going to preach. But they tell me that I have a gift of prophecy. I do not. I do not. I let people say what they want to say till they ask me. I do not have the gift of prophecy. I'm a praiser who can prophesy. I'm a praiser who can preach. If your tongue is yielded to worship, it can do several things. That man in the checker that just waved on that statement, you, Brown Robinson. Robinson? Who's mate named Brown? Okay, I want to talk to y'all too. I want to say to you, now what people don't know is I am retiring my prophetic gift next year. Look at people like, what in the world is he talking about? I didn't start off as a prophet. I started off as an elder. And I was preaching all over the world, prophesying, not knowing I was prophesying. But because we have so many knockoffs. All right, I don't hear nobody, so I will. Then it's time for the real to get away in the cave to see what God does to the rest. We'll still be preaching prophetically. But y'all are being blessed today on my way to retirement. I want you to, can you run without limping? Can you run a little bit? I'm going to have you jog across the front for your new acres of land. Right? And God said, some of this will be two miles outside of Fayetteville. Two miles outside. It's already in motion. I called you brown by mistake, but I called you brown because God says there's some checks he owes you from your past life, not your marriage. And even though you walked away and stepped into a new season with this wonderful man, God said, no, I still owe her. He said, let Sheila know that I'm going to put like almost like a strip mall thing with your businesses in it somewhere across the line. And if I have more than 10 people that know you're going to be millionaire status, you ought to scream for yourself and for the Robinson family. All right, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Grandma said, closed mouths don't get fed. Do you know how ironic it is for a healer and a prophet to live together? It was ridiculous. I get sick, he just touched me or zapped me. He date the wrong one. I said, thus saith the Lord, that ain't your wife. It was just back and forth. <laughs> this young man, what is your name? Fred, Fred Foster. When I met him, he just walked over to me. I spoke into his life and his wife and I said to him, about time I see you again, you and your wife will be living in a new home. And he just looked at me, he said, I said, do you believe it? He said, yeah. What happened? You moved into the brand new house when? Two years ago. You like it? You got to get ready to rent it because God said another one is coming in your direction. God's about to make one place pay for the other place and someone with a loud mouth ought to shout yes. The Lord said he's doing this because you've been faithful. Hey, bless you. You've been faithful over a few things. 
God's about to make you ruler over many. Just a question, don't get offended. Are you on any medications? The Lord, when I shook your hand earlier and we started hugging, the Lord says, tell him the enemy is trying to bring an affliction within his body when he goes to see the doctor. Tell him, I'm going to heal him tonight. Tell him, not only am I going to heal him, I'm going to, cre I'm going to recreate something that he does not have. Do you mind if I touch you somewhere? Yep. Now if we If we gonna believe in miracles We have to believe Look at somebody and tell them God is a healer Be seated We're moving expeditiously Because my time is fleeting Yes, Lord. There's a machando. I don't know. I, uh, I don't know if these people are here because I keep seeing their face come and go. They're flashing back and forth. Uh, it sounds like uh, it sounds like a R&B singer, Brian McKnight. See, I saw the face come and go. Do you know how to text him? Anybody know how to text him? You know how to text him? I mean, I don't care how you do it. I don't want to talk to him, but y'all can set it up for him. But It's almost like the same singer's name. Almost spelled the identical way. Okay, Brian McKnight, born on February the 21st. You can ask him that when you get him. Well, him and, him and Jessica, right? I want to talk about Jessica. Now, you said he left, so you must know him. Did he go home or did he have a meeting? He had a service. All right, all right. Well, just let him know I'm talking about him. He's born on February 21st, if he's the right one. And I'm talking, to, I'm talking to him and Jessica. He can sign on and watch it and make it much easier. But tell him, I just spoke to the Brown, I mean Robinson family. And I want him and his wife to dance on some new property. I want him to find by his, wait a minute, he's a, um, he's, is he still working? He still has a nine to five? Ask him. You got him on the phone. He's still working? All right. Um, something hospital, mental something. Chaplain of what? At the hospital? All right. I need him to know that God is going to give him some unfamiliar territory. I don't can't see the city, but in the city that starts with the letter S. Where's his church? Where's his ministry? Where does he live? Ask him. Tell him, tell you. Listen. Marion, where is he from? He's from Marion? No, this, this, this town must not be far from Marion. It has the letter S on it. Okay. I know y'all trying to wait for me to be wrong. Y'all gonna be waiting for a long time. Because I've been doing this 40 years. There was no laptops, no computers, no, no nothing. I used to have to take off my shoes, but if I do that, it gets a little more dangerous. Hey there, buddy. I have never done this online like this, like talk to somebody in their car. I want you to go look for land and property wherever you want to go. Your wife Jessica needs it because she's going to own two boutiques. Oh, he, no, see, he driving and shaking. I'm not, no, no, no. Mm -mm. Not, no, not, not while he driving. Mm -mm. 
Mm -mm. See, y'all laugh, but I'm very wise. Pull the car over or something. You will not say he crashed while he was getting the prophecy from Prophet Tall. God is going to bless you and your wife to become marketing people, marketplace ministry. This should start within the next 30 days because of your faith and loyalty. God says not only you, but every woman in this building with a business, God's about to flourish you in the next 30 days. And anybody with happy hands and a big mouth, use them to the glory of God. One more, then I'm going to the word of God. I don't control this. It basically controls me. And when it's over, it's just gone. And I know y'all are waiting for, what does he mean he's not a prophet? Invite me back. I'll explain it. But I'm looking for a young man. I'm not sure if this is his name, Nico. I'm looking for a young man. You know him too? You say he a part of what? Oh, he's a part of your church. Is his last name Hannah? Okay. He's, he's born on August the 12th. He should have stayed here. He should have not went anywhere. He should be here right now. Y'all know how to reach him? I don't want you to tell him to come back because I'll be gone about the time he make it back here. But this is what I want you to tell him. If he stops wherever he is and actually gives God glory, I don't care where he is. Tell him if he gets back to being focused, he's going to own something that looks like a dessert stand. Uh-oh. Somebody over there screamed. And why did you scream? Tell me why you screamed. Oh, you know him. Oh, oh, okay. He got to work a little more on his special cupcakes, whatever these little special cakes are. But when you scream, the, the Lord said, tell you, because you identify with a praise, God said a three-bedroom home is headed in your direction and that your credit is going from 620 to 735. Now, I don't know how this is going to work. Are y'all happy in this section for them? Amen. 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 I want you to be Oshiandai. I want you to say these two words to your neighbor. And if they make sense to you prophetically, you will be blessed by your response. Just look at your neighbor to the right and left and tell them you're next. Look at somebody else and say it with power and say, you're next. You're next. Jesus. Thank you. Get your Bibles. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. If anyone in here is really tapped into the spirit and the oil that's on your leader and that oil actually has a mandate to flow from the head down, you will say these three words to three folk around you and if they don't go crazy for God, don't talk to them for the whole sermon, then go back to being friends. But just shake them and tell them, pay it in full. Yeah.
anointing of debt free all in this building and I'm proof that God can do it and if God can't do it it just can't be done Oh, Jesus! Jesus is on the main line! Woo! Hallelujah! Get your Bibles. Thank God for my personal assistant, Bishop Keith K. Curry. I saw, I'm sorry, son. I, am, I, I bless your name. Get your... Shanda Be seated. We'll dance at the end and go straight to the concert. But while you're sitting down, tell your neighbor anything you need, God's got it. We have three scriptures to visit. Total of 12 verses between them. Let me give my prophetic topic after that and just read three paragraphs of my notes. Then I will holler, we will dance, and I will go to the airport. Hallelujah. Who's pen, Pendergrass? Who's Pendergrass? What's your first name? What's your first name? No, I'm talking to the woman that's going like this. What's y'all's last names? Really? Like Teddy. So there's no more Pendergrass. Who's A I S H A? Who's. And who's that? Your cousin too? Did you go to college? Did she go to college? Do you both have student loans? Wait till Biden checks out. God said your loans just got paid off. And y'all don't believe in debt free, but you're going to learn. But I dare somebody to clap your hands and shout, yes! That's it. Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. I don't want to be remembered for prophesying. So Psalms 133, verses 1 through 3. And then Luke, at my church, they don't know me as a prophet at all. I do not prophesy at my church. Luke chapter 8, they are enjoying it right now on YouTube. Prophesy, Bishop. <laughs> and then Luke chapter 8, verse 41 through 48. That's 11 of my verses. And then Mark 9, 19 through 22. May not make it through them, but please encourage me as I've just emptied and poured into you. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity what is what is it symbolic of it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments I've got help to my right as the dew of Hermon and, that, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion for there the Lord commanded can get no help the blessings even life forevermore let us focus on verse 2 where it says that the gravity of the oil that fell that came down from the head and then attached itself to the beard that it landed in the skirts of the garments y'all not gonna push me now huh it's all right <laughs> and there the lord commanded the blessings 
Luke chapter 8 verse 41 through 48 is a familiar story for 10 of you who will talk to me as I preach and that is that oil that went down the beard to the garment there's a woman in the story that's going to catch it in the hem. Touch somebody and tell them the oil is for the folk at the bottom. Verse 41, behold, there came, it's all prophetic, a man named Jarius, and he ruled, he was one of the fine rulers of the synagogue, fell down at Jesus' feet, besought him that he would come to the house, and he had only one daughter, the age of the daughter was 12 years old, and she was dying. When I pause, a few Baptocostal people talk to me. But as he went, the people thronged him. A woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. I want to make a quick observation for 10 folk who will be debt free this year, and that's this. Jarius has a daughter that's 12 that's dying, and the woman is carrying something as old as his daughter. Look at your neighbor and tell him, stop feeding your problems. Yeah, because if it's in you, it has to be eating off of you. If you have a problem today, you brought it here. All right, it got quiet. Jarius was smart enough in this text to leave his problem at home. And his attempt for screamers was to get the God of the church to his home address. Look at somebody and tell them I'm taking Jesus home with me. Go and tell them. This woman had an issue of blood 12 years spent all spent all spent all her living upon physicians neither could be healed of any came from behind touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood they're not with me bishop tell him help me was staunched go down to verse 48 and just hear these words and he said unto her daughter be of good comfort your faith made you whole Go in peace. What I want to say for my same 100 people who will yell, he did not say what he normally says to most people, and that is, and sin no more. So I want to talk to those that can communicate with a stranger. Everything wrong ain't attached to sin. I just want you to tell you. Everything going wrong in your life is not because of some sin you've done in your life. Yep, yeah, we all going to disagree with a few things, but that's fine. Matthew chapter 9 verse 19 through 22, then you may be seated, but your mouths need to remain open because you don't know when I'm going to say something. Jesus arose and followed him and so his disciples and behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him touched the hem of his garment verse 21 for she said within herself if I may touch his garment I will be made whole that word whole is not well is not cured that word whole for 10 vocal scream means whatever you get delivered from can never come back that's the word sozo. So I'm prophetically preaching. Whatever you've been going through after you leave here, you will never go through that again. Now you may go through something else, but look at somebody and tell them this is over. Whatever my that is, it's over. Jesus turned about and when he saw her, he said, daughter. Be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman, y'all with me, was made whole from that hour. All right, you may be seated, but I had two topics. I had one when I studied it this morning. Then it flipped on me when I sat here. 
So let me give you the original one. And I want my 10 people out of hundreds of you to talk because you're going to be debt free for real. But I need you to talk. My first topic was I'm at ground zero. Y'all going to help me preach upstairs. I'm not talking to the apostle. You can't fall no lower than the ground. Talk to me. The only place, Dr. Edge, you, you can go from the bottom is up or stay where you are. Look at somebody and tell them I refuse to stay where I am. But the new topic for a hundred of you who will jump and get blessed is, it's my money, my issue, and my miracle. It's my money. It's my issue. Repeat that to somebody. It's my money. It's my issue. But it's also my miracle. Let me get to my notes with these 30 some minutes left. I just want to make this statement and pray that everyone understands it and embraces it on everything you agree with. You will say amen. And that is the gospel we preach. If it is truly the gospel must take who you're preaching to to the foot of Jesus Christ. It is not the gospel if it brings your members to you. I want to preach. It is truly the gospel after you are finished it makes those that heard you preach go looking for a closer walk with God. I want to talk to talkers. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, if you please. I'm sorry that y'all don't like my old school style of preaching, but on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground Y'all help me preach. I like that it's sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean. Well, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, this must be the preaching side because they ain't talking. There's no other. Jesus is the way. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. The gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as we call them, is simply good news. Let me say it like this for my 10 talkers. The gospel is the good news in the midst of a bad situation. Life is speaking, pop Life is speaking negative of us while Jesus is pronouncing the positive upon us. Jesus, stay with me, needs your situation to have some fun. See how you didn't catch that. Because there's no secret what he can do. So it's not whether he can do it or not. There's nothing too hard for God. But he needs some of you so he can give himself something to do. Y'all missed it. When your situation is not attached to sin, it is the Lord involuntarily using your situation to bring more people to him. I like the mother in the front. Let's just say it like this. When life says it's over, Jesus says it just begun. Let me get... A little philosophical like your pastor because I watch him all the time. Sometimes he use words I got to look up. But let me say this. And let me say this and see if I have some real uh, pastors, preachers, and women and men of God who know God's chosen you. Where a miracle is needed, most of the time it's because a principle was broken.
He's going to make me preach. He's making me feel. Where a miracle is needed, it is because the person that needs the miracle stepped out of the will of God somewhere. Y'all and stayed out too long. And grace approached the person and said, it still ain't over for you, but you got to find Jesus. And he walks with me. I'm going to preach till I see my friends. And he talks with me. Y'all finish it. And what? As we tarry there, none other. That's why when you read most stories in the Gospels where people get miracles, he ends it with an instruction, sin no more. Y'all admit, but, and don't stand up if you ain't going to speak up because I'm from Brooklyn. That look like you want to fight. If you're going to stand up, then talk to me because we preach better when you're talking to me. I promise you. Here is what's ridiculous. That most people that got a miracle from our Lord and Savior, he then had to tell them, go in peace and don't do what you did to get in this condition again. Yeah. But with this woman, he does not tell her, sin no more. Oh yeah. He also addresses her as daughter. Now if I don't get no honest saints, I need to catch my flight now. Saints make mistakes. Y'all just had Pastor Donnie here. We fall down. The worst thing church folk could do, especially those of hierarchy, is live a life as if you ain't messed up before. I can't stand you. person next to you might have a perfect persona but I promise you they ain't got a perfect pass and some of you should talk louder because your future is bright because you survived the darkness of your past that's where we get if it had not been y'all gonna have me some church I feel like a Sabbath preacher. So if we do what we're not supposed to do, bad things occur. If we continue to do those things, then bad things try to act permanent. Once those things take you too far out, it now says the only way you can get back is you need a miracle. Lord bless the three people talking to me bless them don't worry we come and bless them the unfortunate thing is most of the things that some of us did that put us in the conditions that we are are causing us to use resources that we've saved for other things see you're saving for a future that the past keeps eating right Y'all got to stop seeing every mistake as sin. Every sin is a mistake, but mistakes can cost you too. Oh, yeah. Oh, y'all quiet. And if you saw mistakes as losing money, you would rethink your next decision and be like, "Mm mm-mm. Now, Bishop, I want to tell you a story. Then you will probably never invite me back. But I have, um, I, I, there are some things that I don't do that I am not delivered from. There. Yeah. I know y'all are gonna act holy, not not you two. Now, I can't talk about the other bishop, but there are some things that I do not do. That I enjoy doing that I don't do anymore. I call this, for those who will talk, delivered by default. All right. All right. Gotcha. That's a good word. 
Look at all the real saints. If I, I don't sin at all. You a liar. If any man said he have not sinned. Come on, let's just be bold. He's a liar and the truth of God. What did Jesus die for? For the sins of the world. He needed us to have something for him to do something. So one day the Lord said, Todd, I'm going to give you everything you asked me for. And I'm not going to wait till you get holy. Y'all jealous. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if, if thou wouldest, I didn't say it like that, but that's what I said. I said, you're going to give me everything? He says, the things you've already prayed for, not the new things that you're conjuring up right now. Because when he said he'd do anything, I start to revise my prayer. But Oh, come on. But Dr. McAllister, I already had a basic prayer that I prayed. I wanted a decent home. It never had to be brand new. I needed it to be paid off. I wanted a decent automobile that matched where he was taking me. It didn't have to be new. I needed a good nest egg so in case I retired from preaching or couldn't preach, that he would still supply my needs. He gave me all of that stuff. And then he said this to me for 10 folk who jump again. He said, now, Todd, here's the deal. He says... When I bless you, every time you feed your fetish, I'm taking one of those things back. My fetish never left. Look at Defo, what is it? None of your business. If God shows it to you, then tell, then tell me in the hotel. He, 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 he. I would preach and the fetish would show up. And the Lord said, when it shows up, don't talk to me. Talk to what I gave you. And Elijah said, what you want me to ask it? He said, I want you to ask one of them, which one of you are going to diminish? So every time I got ready to feed my fetish, y'all gonna miss it. I said, I asked my bank account, if I do this, what is it gonna cost me? He said that much. I said, oh no, we won't be doing this. See, y'all gonna miss it. Some of you don't need deliverance, you need discipline. Because some of the things you need deliverance from is not a sin. It's something you have to enjoy later on. Everything is not sin, but everything is held for a season. Come on, 15 minutes. They won't talk to me and I got to preach. Stop funding the past. Your future's hungry. Will you tell your neighbor what I just told you and see if they understand? Stop feeding and funding the past. The future is hungry. If I've got 20 folk with a mouth say, I want everything God has for me. And I need it to begin by the end of the month. Now, the way you know that God's going to do it is how quickly your fetish holds a conversation with you. Her present issues are eating up her future dreams. Now, I want to go to my next level, then my last level. Here's the next level for those who are still making noise because you know the noise is not for me to preach. It's for God to descend upon you and inhabit your sound and activate the scriptures, right? But hold on, catch this. The day is approaching and is upon us when the medical field is going to confirm the miracles of Jesus on a regular basis. For that reason, you're going to miss it. I read the story from the book of Luke. 
I wanted to hear a physician's perspective. Good. When the mashapra sikidi kumpayan. When God should use you to pray for someone and cancer leaves their bodies and go wherever it go. It will be great if a Holy Ghost filled doctor is sitting there. Takes the person to the back. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Does a quick whatever and come out and say, he's healed. See, ain't nothing. Because we are approaching a day where the world is going to start admiring us again. Your sons and daughters gonna be like, we going to church? I need to touch God. What, 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 what you said? What was the conference name? Next is now. I'm gonna leave that alone because y'all done heard it a hundred times. But let me tell you something. What's next is gonna remind you of what we had then. The altars will be filled again. Blind eyes will open again. People will come out of wheelchairs again. Not once in a while. Not once in a while. On a regular basis with a doctor's confirmation. We're not just going to believe it by faith. We're going to receive it by faith and believe it by facts. Y'all ain't talking. I speak this now as Dr. Todd Hall, and I went to school for this, but only you that make a sound will get it. You will be debt free before this year is over. And now it will be up to your bank to confirm it and your credit history and whoever you owe. What God does needs to be confirmed. I'm going to make two more statements. Then we're going to fly that kite. Let me hear B. Yeah, yeah, okay. Our issues are for Jesus' indulgence. Right, right. Look at folks, excuse me. You got to remember that when we first meet God in the book of Genesis, he's God with a job. See, it just, he... He stopped working after day six, but y'all quiet if you want to, but said six days doth the Lord work. So he needed something to do. Now God is now working for you. It's called the working of miracles. All right, it just got quiet. Oh yeah, miracles don't just happen. If God gives you a miracle, he working. Because can't no man give you a miracle. Miracles come from one source. I'm going to preach over here when I hear you over here. Miracles come from one source. I will lift mine eyes. I don't have to preach it all because you don't preach so much. They know when to say amen makes me easy. The Lord's appetite is not for food. He loves doing things for us. And for two folk who will scream, not eight of you. And he needs to see us in something that we can't get ourselves out of. And from that posture, we call Jesus. Come on, I'm almost where I want to be. And if you call Jesus... Let me hear that beat, son. All right. Don't play. My last approach, like Bishop Blue, just so he can call me one day and discuss this and give me some more icing for my cake or tell me what's missing in the cake mix, is in the story, let's go to church, what is hemorrhaging, her or her money?
Look at the D folk. I got to look at it. It ain't that D. It seems like the more she's bleeding, the more she's spending. Maybe that's why God wrote this for 1,000 of you who will scream loud as if we're in the street. He said through the mouth of Apostle Paul, I worship of all things. He connected two things together that you would prosper and. So if you're not healthy, it's hard to prosper. And if I say you're going to be debt free, you got to be illness free also. You cannot let your illness be as old as you. You're carrying an adult. It should leave you and take care of itself. You got to know when to put grown children out. You got to know when to put grown illnesses out. You got to know when to put grown problems out. Hey there, boy. Some of y'all are keeping things like you love them. You got to tell that thing in you, Jesus paid it all. Uh Uh-oh. And for those who scream on this, and I'm almost there, he didn't just pay it all, he paid it off. Not Jesus. Let me hear that B. Lord. Okay. The woman is possibly in the hospital. That's my son playing, y'all. Y'all can know that, don't you? No, no, namesake. Not spiritual. So he won't get paid if he mess up now. Because if he makes me sick, his money got to be short too. Y'all think music don't fix things. You better ask King Saul when David played. He played so well, God got off him. Y'all ain't... That wasn't no evil spirit from hell. That was from God. Let me use my mind's eye and then get into a hoop and let you go. She's laying in the hospital and the Bible says she spent all. Now, I'm going to say this prematurely because of the time. So I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to say this and five people high five somebody and one person up here high five me. And I don't want it to be Curry because you're going to do it because you're with me. I need to be somebody else who need to be in the camera. Now, what I want to say, what I want to say to 30 people who will scream is when she ran out of money, it was broke that escorted her to Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Come here. Stay with me, Jimmy. Jimmy, stay with me. As long as she had money, she kept running to the doctor. She was funding her issue. as soon as she spent her last dime she has no more blue cross blue shield she has no more Obamacare The people whose salary she was paying through insurance and her money now have to give her the bad news. The bad news is, Dr. McAllister, you ran out of room and we need your room. You ran out of money and we need your room. Some people will get rid of you once they get what they want out of you, but we, you know. 
They'll get your license and leave your fellowship. But let me leave this on. Start a church and name it right after yours. Almost the same thing. Sound like you, dress like you, try to get deep like you, preach a message verbatim. Shadows should never leave their image. your room the nurses know her by name the doctors because she's been there for 12 years everybody's familiar with her they love her but they also know they're pimping her because they have no cure they're bringing her specialists and people who are professionals in their field of work who already know we can help you live longer than expected but not let you live the life God ordained you to live. Y'all quiet over here now. My friends here, I'm going to go back over here. Talk to me. <laughs> She's hemorrhaging from private areas and women who are real know when you bleed too long, you get dizzy. You, you, come on, talk. You get lightheaded. You also need anger management because your hormones are going crazy. You don't know how to accept help because you've been hurt so long. You don't know how to smile because you've been fake so long. And now you refuse to act like something you're not because you want the actual thing before you smile again. I want to come back over there because the leader's over there, but right now I'm held hostage. All the bishops and everything over there, that's deep. Yes, Lord. All the children like, let's go, man, because I'm tired of spending my money on my fetish. Well, you told me to put the t-shirt on for the young people. So I knew you were undercover bringing me to a youth service and I enjoy this. What happens? They bring a wheelchair. They say you got enough money for us to put you in the hospital's chair. But once we get you to the exit of this facility, we need everything back. Uh, the CNA, the nurse or whoever, the RN, the LPN that's escorting her in the chair. Can I get ready to preach for three minutes? She, let me hear that B again. Oh, Lord, she's, 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 you're going to get paid, boy. She pushing. Y'all heard them new chords? That means he want to raise. is pushing her yes. and they probably had a conversation that went like this and I'm going to see if y'all get happy over here or I'm going back said now I could have sent you somewhere long time ago that would not have cost you any money Ain't nothing like having fun, church. Ain't nothing like. And the woman's dizzy and saying, what you talking about? Said, now he's only been doing what he's doing for three years. But you've been coming to us for 12. So we had nowhere to send you until now. She said, do I have to stand on the line? She said, he got long lines. Oh, 
Does he practice medicine? No. Got close to the door. She said, I'm going to need this chair now. She said, but I can't walk to him. She said, get there the best way you can. Uh-oh. Good God. <laughs> and the best way she could get there was ground zero. She gets down there, dizzy, emotional, crying and laughing. <laughs> She's dying in the process of pursuing. She hears two words so loud and them two words are give up. But those two words were overtaken by two more words. Hold on. I want you to preach to somebody. We're almost there. Tell them either give up or hold on. You ought to tell somebody if I was you, I'd hold on. Just a little while longer. These heavy burdens. She presses. Uh oh, I'm almost there now. Crowds are in front of her haters are exposing who she is by saying unclean her situation has gone public proof that she's dying is trailing her from behind spots of blood y'all don't hear this in her past but it's the blood of Jesus Paves the way in her future. Lean on somebody and tell them don't bleed to death. But call on Jesus. Hey, ah, yes. Call on Jesus. He will answer prayer. Grab one neighbor, make that your friend for the next three minutes and don't touch them if they're not made out of Jesus material. Because what got to heal, not was touching him, but touching his material. And every person in here that knows God is a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, when you touch that person, healing is already released. Hello. Where there's two or three, y'all don't want to preach, come here. Gather together in my name. Touching and agreeing. Touch your name and say, I'll find out if you are the right material. Cause before I get to my home, my situation better dry up. Hey, hey, Lord, grab a hold of somebody else and say, neighbor, you don't believe it because you need more scripture. Here goes my final scripture. Then I'll yell for two more minutes. It said she touched the hem of his garment and she was made whole. But then Jesus said, for a thousand that would scream, he said, who touched me? They said, why did you ask? He said, because what I had for you, she got it. The virtue left me and went into her. Some of y'all still want to touch Jesus when all you got to do is touch your leader. All you got to do is touch your brother. Because what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Shake a neighbor's hand now and say, neighbor, 
be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Grab your neighbor and say to your neighbor, be healed, be delivered, be set free right now in Jesus' name. You are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. You are anointed. You are chosen. You are the head and not the tail. If you believe it, clap your hands and say yes. If you got a screaming in you, say, oh, neighbor, I tried, I tried Jesus, and he's all right. If there's power in this auditorium, high five three people, get him well, and tell them there's power, power, wonder working power. Where is it? In the blood, in the blood. Hold somebody's hand a minute. Aya. Dubrian tu silibikan. Moshandi di oskaba. Do me a shombe. Do me a sinibi oshetaya. Do me a favor. All of you that really believe that in 30 seconds what was trying to kill you has got to go. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to clap, leap, or dance, then I need to close. But when you do it, God said, don't do it out of emotion. Do it out of, I survived it. You got 30 seconds to praise him. One, two, one, two, three. There's a problem. I just looked over the whole auditorium. Some of you still got that little church righteous indignant posture until you find out you got cancer, high blood, until a loop tell you you got three months to live. Then you're gonna start looking for revivals and miracles. But this is the way to avoid it. So I'm gonna rewind and give you 30 seconds. I hear you, I don't know how to dance. Just jump up and down. That's what you do. But you got 30 seconds to get a prescription from heaven to be healed of what earth said you can't be healed from. One, two.
praise him, Pastor Melinda. Praise him, Bishop. Hold hands. They got a concert. They don't need that. Let them do that in the concert. things to say two is from the scripture one is a challenge whoever's hand you're holding if they feel faithful don't let it go if you know they've got Jesus material you holding on to some Jesus three things look at me and listen CCFM it left him and Jesus announced it went somewhere it's a shame that the same folk that called her dirty now needed what she received. How are you going to act when God puts what you need in who you don't like? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can't pick and choose miracles. You have to be humble. You have to be naked. Two more things. Bishop, if it makes sense, just stomp your right foot softly for me and I'll be happy that you brought me. She could have never got to Jesus with all of them thousands if problems didn't pave her way. When she was bleeding, they said unclean and people moved out the way. Hold on. When you see people leaving you because of the things they heard about you, that's God clearing a path. I'm going to make a profound statement. That's how I got here. I hemorrhaged my way to this stage. Blood, sweat, and tears. He had to plow through. Why you bringing him? She's bleeding. One thing left after this. And when folks see the speckles of blood, they say unclean and everybody in her way moved. Y'all catch this. Everyone moved but Jesus. Jesus said, come on. She touched the hem of his garment. She was made whole. Here's the second thing for the loudest screamers. Young people catch it. And millennials and you that got good sense and need a miracle catch this. When she touched him, people still believe she wasn't healed. Because the blood on the dress was fresh, fresh. But the situation inside was old. Young. So if certain people don't know you from the inside out, what do you care? We're going crazy over who don't like us, who have not learned us. How do you dislike what you have not learned? How do you not like food you've never tasted? How do you like a person you don't know? It's called the infection is spread because one of your friends told you. She touches him, the blood on the dress, the 
Apostle Coleman is fresh. God didn't tell her go change clothes. But the situation on the inside, no one knew she was healed but her. She felt in her body. And last but not least, and this is where I'll see who's serious because I gave honor to everybody because we all have our separate gifts of God. That if we ever embrace each other's gift, the world will see who God really is. The world keeps looking at God disabled. This arm hate that arm. This leg won't walk with the other leg. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Here's how I close. You may want to high five me on this, then we'll talk about it on the phone. I don't believe that the healing was ever in his garment from the beginning. I messed up. I don't even believe that Jesus had any intention on healing her uh -huh. no. I don't frown yet uh -huh. I also have proof that what she's being healed of has no evil spirits or demonic presence attached to it or he would have cast it out this is something she picked up along the way let me tell you why she got healed from touching his garment. I read it quick and made you lose it. And if Bishop Rawson get this, I know he will. I'll scream and go to Orangeburg soon. But 50 of you scream on this. She put the heel in there for she said, if I can touch. And she put it where she could reach it easily. Because she was already on the ground. God's about to put your miracle where you can reach it. And it's going to be easy. She said, if I may touch just the hem of his gun. Nobody told her it was there. That's why he said, your faith. Because you believed in me, but you put it somewhere where you can get to it. I want to prophesy to 500 screamers by the end of this week it'll be right where you need it. <laughs> Miracles should not be hard to reach. It's as far from you as your mouth remains closed. If she did not speak to it she would have had no access to it. Now for the last time, and I mean it, you're holding somebody's hand who is debt free in Jesus' name. Are your pro properties paid for? Are your properties paid for? I am seeing God cut you a check for something going on in Jersey. God says, I'm going to stop that ministry from bleeding. God says, I'm going to show you. It's going to bring life and vegetation back to its city. It was supposed to be a hard task, but God said it's about to be an easy miracle. God said, tell my son, when I sent him there, don't let him believe that it was a start over. I just wanted him to crawl as an example. To show him how fast things can get off the ground. You're helping someone's legacy live. You could have said no, but God says it deserves a chance at living. Your father? Oh Lord, I got to get out of here. But it deserves a chance at living. 
Hold that hand. Don't let it.